about it yesterday, around the moon, or something like that. And I heard this man make a statement. And he said this. I'm not going to quote exactly what he said, but this is what I heard. Most Christians don't know how valuable they are to the Lord. That's right. And in His sight, we're valuable people. And as a result of that, let me tell you what God has done. God has provided for us a word that if we can use that word, which contains His power over every situation, we can learn to be like He is. And I think the scripture says that. As he is, so are we. Who is the we? Is it us we? Or is it another we somewhere else? Oh, he wants to keep up. Okay. <laughs> That's Judy's favorite baby grandson. So, <laughs> oh, by the way, I, 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 I just that's the favorite. We can't say that he's the favorite, that he's not the favorite. I have too many of them. That's right. I said the favorite youngest. I did put that word in there. You see, you're here much more. I think Roman's younger than him. Who? Roman's younger than him. Is he? Well, okay. Anyway, my. That's just for today. <laughs> we're waiting on a new one right now. Uh, yeah, I start, <coughs> don't jump the gun on me, Walter. Oh, sorry. In case you run the mouth. <laughs> uh, anyway, I got a Caleb, uh, her side of the family, called and said they are on their way to the hospital. Caleb and oh, his sweet Taylor uh, are in the proceeds of having a baby these awesome. days. So I expect when we get out of here, it might be uh, shooting down the hat there, so. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> taking a wrong entrance into this world. I'm <coughs> excited about that. Uh, that was uncalled for. <laughs> I can't say anything. I'm going to be asking that question. <laughs> Right. 
Now, if somebody prays that God that that God would put a little pressure on you, and I have felt that pressure before, because I didn't, I wouldn't listen to the Lord, and so uh, members of my family have prayed, and and uh, the pressure came as a result of the prayer, which is, can you help us do something with our father and my husband, uh, or my brother, or whatever? And so I got lots of prayers. Pray for me. My wife prayed for me for years. Psalm 116. Is that it right here? 112. She prayed years for that. And it took a long time for me to yield to that which she prayed for me. So, by the way, these people here, I don't know who you are, but I'll tell you what, uh, we're just a little bit different. Well, I'm glad you're here. Hallelujah. So good for you to be here today. I'm glad you got to come and see me today. You could have seen me yesterday too if I know if you came by while I was riding my motorcycle on a cold day. But anyway, here we go. And uh, so if I can tell you get you to see the goodness of God how good He is and He's not against you and He's for you all the time. See, what we have been taught in our lifetime is that God gets mad at us and He withdraws Himself and puts a, a petition up between us so we don't have to hear anything we got to whine around about or moan and groan about and He just won't listen to us and then we've got to shut off. That's the most erroneous teaching that we have ever been taught is that God shuts us off. He has never, ever shut any Christian off that made Jesus Christ Lord of God. He's never shut them off at any time. Because He loves us with an unconditional love. Amen. He poured out on us every promise. Amen. The first scripture I want to use is there on the board. Therefore you have no excuse. Everyone will be the past in the judgment. Or in that you wish to judge another, you condemn yourself, for you who judge practice the same thing. And we know that the judgment of God rightly falls on those who practice such things. But do you suppose this, O oh man, when you pass judgment on those who practice such things and do the same thing yourself, that, that you would escape the judgment of God? Now, I want to say something right there. Sometimes. I've been guilty, you probably haven't, but I have been guilty of forming an opinion about a situation about somebody, and I didn't have all the facts that were involved. I just had what somebody wanted me to know, and I made a, a judgment call based on what I did know, but I didn't have all the information. So I made a judgment call, and, and I formed an opinion about that situation based on what I knew. And then come to find out later on, that was only about half the story. The rest of the story was well, it would have changed everything that I knew and the judgment that I made against that person had I known all of the circumstances involved. I'm trying to learn, honestly I am, I'm trying to learn not to make a snap judgment against any situation that I run into because there's Sometimes extenuating circumstances that I didn't hear about. That's right. Mm -hmm. Now, if you didn't learn anything else, I hope you learned that. You know, that thing is going to be a good thing for you. Because God really cares about you. And, he, and if you get crossways and you have some, you say something about, uh, what if I said something about my friend Daryl? Or my friend David? What if I said something about this? You know what you're going to do? You're going to take up my feelings about them. Right. Who is that? I'm not going off. I mean, who is it? Jeff Johnson, you can call him back later. That's all right. You got to go. We let it ring. Any more money? We have it all the time here. Matter of fact, my phone went off. So, 
Now the next scripture here is this. Because Russo is this. Don't you think lightly of, of the riches of his... I don't like that word kindness. That's not the best translation of it. That word in the Greek means goodness. God's goodness. And I don't know why the King James or any rest of it or the New American translated it kindness. It should be goodness. Why his goodness and the tolerance and patience not knowing that the kindness of the goodness of God is the thing that brings us to the place of repentance in our lives. It's good. God's just good. He was good to you when you weren't good back to Him. That's Amen. Right. He was good to you when you didn't care a thing about serving Him. When you was ranting and raving and living a hellacious life out there, He was still good to you. He kept the devil from killing you. He kept the red lights from somebody running a red light when they wanted to run a red light and they, and they could have killed you then, but He, he stopped you. You don't know the time that God saved your life. You have no idea how many times He saved your life. Right. Right. And you say, well, I don't know that God was good. You, yeah, you don't know. That's right. right. Come on. I don't know how many times God saved my life and protected right. me. What if I got the wrong crowd? Uh -oh. what, if I, what if I went out one night and got drunk and a bunch, uh, a bunch of us got out just when I was a teenager out drinking uh, a beer, of course, two beers sitting me somewhere else. I, I don't know how I'm in two beers. And I was drunk, and the people I was with a lot, and they had a car wreck, and all of them got killed. But God stopped that. He prevented all that. He, he prevented the devil. Because the Bible says, and this next one says, in John 10, So Jesus said to them again, Very true, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. Is that right? Yeah. All right, let's go ahead. And all who came in before are thieves and robbers, but the sheep, he said, did not hear them. I'm the door. If anyone enters through me, he will be saved, and we'll go in and out and find pasture. But he said, look here. This is a very important scripture of what we're talking about today. The thief. Say thief. 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 And say, it's not God. It's not God. God. Anytime there is anything that happens bad, People will say, well, you know, or I have a death in the family. And this wears me out. I'm going to jump up and scream in somebody's face. I say, are you out of your mind? Quit blaming God. God has to take blame for everything bad going on. Why don't you blame the one that you belong to, which is the devil? Come on. If right. something didn't go right, it's the devil. Say, the devil tried to steal from me. That's right. And quit saying it's God. God didn't cause you or your mother to die. He didn't cause your family to get it, be in poverty. The devil stole from you. Absolutely. So why don't you say what's right and learn to say what God says about you and the power that as a Christian He's given you to stop the thing that the devil's doing to you. That's right. You don't have to be in poverty. Come on. Amen. You choose not to fight. Amen. Am I preaching to anybody? That's good. Come on. Keep going. Mm -hmm. Your pocket ought to be your pocket ought to be full of money. Why? Because somebody he might want you to give it away to somebody. Sure. Amen. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, if they ever met somebody that had a need and you couldn't meet me because you didn't have any money? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I used to carry three $100 bills on me all the time. You didn't know that, didn't you? Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Secret chat. Oh, I guess it but anyway, what I'm going to say to you is that, that when somebody had a need, I could pull them out and give them a hundred dollars. Amen. You know why I'm blessed? Why Judy and I are blessed? Because my wife is a giver. Apostle Clayton told us, and he said, Judy, he said, you give to a fault. And I tried to adopt that, and the Lord said, leave her alone. I didn't want to hear that. I said, the Lord is my money. <laughs> <laughs> Not so much. Uh, yes, no, is. they didn't drop up at mine. She had a charge of all of it. <laughs> she locked me out of bank account if she wanted to. <laughs> and Tom would be in the tree. But you know what? My wife always finds somebody to give something to. Yeah. And that's why I finally I can't do something. That's why we're blessed. 
not because of why I'm back there, right? It's just it's free to give her. It's what's on the hook. Amen. She gives something to somebody all the time. People are drawn to you. Beauty's like, like a man. They just come to her. She needs them all the time. But you know what? Because God knows that she's got a heart to keep. Oh, that, by the way, that's the nature of our Father. Did you know the nature of our Father is to give? He said that. John 3.16 told us that. For well, God so loved the world that He gave. And He's never stopped giving. He gave His only begotten Son that we, or those that believe in Him, shall not perish but have ever in the life of life. All you got to do is breathe. So, let me give a drag on this See, I'm going to deal with that in a moment. Okay. <clears throat> uh, John 10, there we're at now. Okay, let's go to John 10. I mean, can't get in. See, it's going to be beautiful and joy. I think that they may not lie and have it in front of you. Oh, we can find out about that person. Uh, that uh, the thief comes to steal, we, we know that pretty good. Uh, and to destroy. But the last part of it, we don't believe that. Right. That he came so that Christian people can have an abundant life. If you don't know what the abundant life means or what that word means, it means an overflow of money. Right. It means an overflow that you don't have to beg somebody for anything or wish you had this or wish you had that because God is able to supply everything that you want or need. Amen. People act like God is so strapped for money <laughs> in heaven that He, you know, he says, well, uh, you know, why don't you just pray for me? Lord, I just want to tell him before you, and I, I got this little need and I hope you can squeeze it out for me because I know you're a little strapped right now. Um, maybe there was a, a turmoil in America and, and they're going through a, a real bad time in America and they're, they're having a depression. And, and so I know you're having a kind of hard time making the need, but if you could just help me out a little bit, and, and I hope I'm not putting too much pressure on you about all that. If you can, help me. Could be that real. I'm, I'm afraid that I'm afraid. I'm, I'm thinking to God that God will do this. What are you talking about? You ignorant little thing. And ignorant means to be uninformed. What is the matter with you? All I'll tell you about is it didn't reach where you're supposed to go. The abundant life means I have enough for me and somebody that don't know how to believe or a non-Christian person, I got enough to share with him too. Amen. I told you last week about my wife's uh, pantry. We've always had it. We have never, I can't tell you how long it's been since we didn't have any questions in our house. It's been a long time. Huh? 50 years. At least 50 years that we haven't had anything to eat in our house. Why? Because my life is going out of soul. There's a law, there's a spiritual law that says if you sow, you reap. If you don't sow, nothing of nothing is nothing. Right. If you don't sow anything, you ain't getting nothing back. What if I said, well, I don't have any money to sow. Don't you tell me that. You with my job? Listen to me. You might not have a lot. You might have $10. Find some money and sow it. Say, God, I, I believe this man tells the truth, but you know what? I'm going to believe that if I sow this, I'm just show me my gift. I need this thing working around it. And show me how to, how to begin to receive uh, my, my reaping for the soul that I know how to do. I don't know how to do that. Just sow it. Alright. 
And John's good. He, look here. He's better math than you are. Right. <laughs> I guarantee you that. He'll give when you, when you your, your uh, calculations are wrong. That can go the other way too. So, let's go on here. The thief comes to steal, kill, and throw a knife in we have life and hand it more abundantly. God wants us to have the so we can have enough to give away. Christian people, that's the nature of God that finds it on the inside of us. He wants you to give away. He don't want you to hang on to it. I'm the good shepherd, and the good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. All night. You know what the Bible says about a man and his wife? If he loves her, he lays down his life, life for his wife. Uh, I've had time, I've had time in my life, you probably did, but I've had time in my life that I, I don't know if I'm too sure about that in my life. <laughs> Time to allow the two of them here and keep from because I'm going to ball the whole time about it. It's not that long yet. So, with my wife, she knows that. She knows that. She told me last year, 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 I said, okay. Did you drive me home then? You sowed good seeds. Huh? You sowed good seeds there. Yes, yeah, you did. Praise God. I got a little truck over here. You know where I got it. First testimony, right? Good to be. So, uh, well, okay, go on. Next uh, verse. We got all the night. I'm a good shepherd and I know my own and my own know me. That's it. Yeah. So, you know what? Just because you get saved doesn't mean the lakes get the, the things over. That's right. Everything's not handed to you on a silver platter. God said in Hosea 4, I read it, it's in there yesterday. My people are destroyed because they choose to be ignorant. That's right. I said, he said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because it would be that. That don't sound right. Well, don't sound right. It's the truth. Anything you get from the Lord, you're going to have to seek after it. Yes. He got it. He, listen here. At salvation, he has made so many provisions for you. But if you don't know, they're not going to do you any good. Right. Now, yeah, he'll, he'll give you anything you need. He'll provide your needs. But, you know, your wants and desires, you won't have to seek after that. Hello. You want me a lot more? I do. Me and Bradshaw, we need to do a lot more than Bradshaw. Amen. 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 We need him one last week, didn't we? So I, I'm just saying, you know, God meets your need. He knows what you need. And you know, sometimes you don't even have to ask for it. He just makes it something you you come in contact with that. But other times you, you have to seek out after things. <clears throat> and that's what I want to say to you, is sometimes you just have to seek after things. <clears throat> All right, Luke 18, 19. And Jesus said, Why do you call me good? No one is good except who? Now, I've wrestled with that scripture a number of times. <clears throat> one way I believe one, one way about it, and next time I say, well, maybe that's not what maybe it is, it is this other way. Jesus was telling the people, are you acknowledging that I have God in me? When you call me good, why do you call me good? If you, if, so nobody calls in my, nobody's good except God. Are you saying that I am like my Father? Or to have you experienced the goodness of God. Do you know that God really is good? Because He was good to you. I don't know, but in the same way, it works both ways, it worked for you. Jesus, listen, He said, you can't call anybody good if you have God. Now I know some good people 
in the world. I know, I, and I know some people that aren't Christians that are better than most Christians. Yeah. Peggy, you know anybody like that? What? I mean, they're just, just good people. They do anything in the world to help you yeah. and don't mind it. And they would never ask you for anything back. Or never think in return. They just they're just good people. Mm -hmm. I met a guy yesterday working on my took my line over to me and met him and he said, you know, he said, I he said, I love to help people. He said, I got a bigger because I he said, I know so many places around here charge eighty, ninety dollars uh, an hour for no work. He said and they don't he said don't don't, don't they, they work an hour and charge you ninety dollars or eighty dollars for it and it don't take them fifteen minutes to fix it. He said, that's wrong. He said, it's just totally wrong. <clears throat> and he said, so I got in this thing, so I want to meet. He said, I just want to help people. And I thought, you don't find that much for very much anymore. He said, now I'll make money on this time. He said, he said, I don't mind making money. And he had a big old, uh, you pull a trailer along a more portable home, you know. It's 30, he said, it's 34 feet long. Oh, wow. And he had a big old truck to pull it. I'm thinking, wow. But you good know what? Huh? He sold good seeds. Yeah, he, yeah, really. So I, 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 and you know, I'm glad to see people like that. Hallelujah. In Austin, Indiana, of course. So let me tell you something. Austin is not a poor place. There's a lot of nice, beautiful homes in Austin, Indiana. And you say, well, it is, you know, it's a poor place in the county. If not the poorest place. Go look and see them houses up there and tell me how poor it is. Scottsdale's got some of the same kind of homes too. Sure, sure. I mean the lower place. So every place is got them. All right, let me go on here. Romans 8, verse 26. Now this, I'm, I'm trying to get as much as I say as I can. In the same way the Spirit also helps our weaknesses, but we don't. I mean, I was praying like we ought to, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us. We've grown into too deep for work. And we're talking about in the Spirit. And he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. When you pray in the Spirit, you're praying a perfect prayer. <coughs> if you don't know how to do that, then by all means, seek out and find out how to do that because you uh, you, it's hard for you to uh, ask the Lord for a perfect something the way you need to be asked for if you don't know how. Right. But if you pray in the Spirit of that, I'll guarantee you it, it, it's the best prayer you can pray. You can't pray any better. Mm -hmm. That's as good as it gets. Yes. A friend of mine, Ronnie Poole, he prays for me all the time. But he's gone, he prays for me every day of your life. He prays for me. And I want to tell you something. You spend hours just praying. Praying this man on me I've ever known. I thought, how in the world do you, how can you pray for eight hours a day? How can you do that? Most I've ever prayed in one day was four hours and I had to walk, keep myself on and sleep. I don't have a lot of this. For some people just they got a knack to that pray and they can pray all day long. You know, I think that's uh, uh You know what I'm talking about? Uh, John Australia? John Allen. John Allen? They come here to church and they sit for an hour. Just waiting on the Lord. Ain't nobody in America going to sit in church, come and sit in the church and wait on the Lord for an hour. <coughs> I've never ever heard of that before in America. We're too fast paced for that. We can't wait for no hour. We wait 30 minutes on something. Somebody had a word or something. We're flying. Does anybody listen to what I'm saying? We need to learn how to listen to the Lord That's right. collectively. Amen. And we've tried that on Wednesday nights. I mean, we're, we're getting pretty good. We've been we're 15, 20 minutes one time. <laughs> we're, we're, we're making some headway. <coughs> Why? Because we need to learn. Hey, God will not compete with you to try to talk to you when you're talking yourself. That's right. Sometimes I think we need to learn to be well, all the scripture says that. Study to be quiet. Mm -hmm. Learn to keep your tie holes shut when you don't need to flap. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah you, need to, you need to take that. All right. 
。ルグラン。メグレコルツ。Next scripture says, and we know that God causes all things to work together for good. There's that word we're looking for. If you love God、uh, and, and do what you're supposed to do, he said that all things will work together for good if you love him and to those who are called according to his purpose. Amen. How many believe that God has a purpose just for you? That's right. Amen. Amen. How many of you believe that, that you're walking in his purpose? But you know what? You have, you have somebody you can talk to that nobody else can. That's right. That's a specific call. It's just as one of you do that, and it's me standing here on Sunday morning and preach the gospel to you. It's important for you to be able to do what God wants you to do when, when He wants you to do that. And if you understand that, I said that it'll. Good things, good things will come out of it if you will just, just wait on it. If you'll do what He wants you to do. And God wants you to be right. He's looking for opportunities to bless you.、Yeah. He's not looking for opportunities to get out of blessing you. He、right. wants to bless you.、Yes. God is good all the time. Not just sometimes. He's good when you don't deserve good. Come on. Amen. He don't, listen, He gives you grace when you don't. You definitely need no grace. I mean, you definitely need a grace, and, and、uh, there are times that you need so grace and you didn't sow it. If you, sow, if you didn't sow grace,、uh, God, don't hold that against me. Next time I、uh, believe I'm going to do better than that. I said, No, there are some people you know, that I have met as a Christian that are very, very difficult for me to. Give grace to. Why? You mean to tell me, Pastor, that you have loved him with hell and grace to be here? I ain't all the one. You have to. And don't tell me you have. You have held your grace back from, from giving people grace for things to be here. Because you said something about it. And he went on to say, For those who have been formulated in predestined to become conformed to the image of the Son, he predestinated those people to be like Jesus. He didn't predestine them to be saved. People, people try to make a, a, a theology out of the scripture. Well, God predestines. He didn't predestine that. He didn't predestine you to be lost or saved. If he did, then he worked against his own will because he said it's the will of God that none be lost. Right. Right. Maybe I know the scripture says that. Yes. And that nullifies that God wills people to be lost. He only wills one person and he looked ahead and seen what his choice was going to be, and that's the son of perdition. That's the only one. And God used him. Are we, we shut down or what? Okay. HDMI. I guess I am shut down now. <laughs> we got a new.、Uh, we got a new provider. Spectrum. And this thing's supposed to be real talent. Oh, by the way, I'm supposed to tell you here that everybody's got cell phones. Shut them cell phones off when you come in here because they still draw power from this house because of our thing. If they're using our Wi Fi. Right. Huh? If they're using our Wi Fi. Yeah, if they're using our Wi Fi, shut it down. You know, that's not free to use that. Okay. And we'll be t h i r t y back on. If they're using their own hotspot or something, that shouldn't be coming in. 
uh, I'm going to be able to drive and take it down so somebody else going to get their head in for sending this mess up. So, <clears throat> you know what? Uh, well, maybe you can come up with Look at this. You're still going to watch church going on anyway. Amen. What I'll do is some Sunday just start walking back there and say, you've got a cell phone and read down and get them put it in my pocket. Let me know how you pass doing that. You'll do it. Well, if you're expecting, if you've got a grandson or a daughter and going to the hospital and the hospital and you want to turn that thing on for a text message, I'm not, you know, I'm here now. I'll get out of there. I'll get out of there. <clears throat> no signal. Press input on your remote. Good job. Good job. Good job. All right. Romans 3, 23. I got all that down. I'll get out. Yeah, let's go to the middle. Hello, let's go to 32. I'm going to have to read this one right now. Uh, and, verse, and verse 31 says, What shall we say in these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? But who, he who did not spare his own son, but delivered him over for us all, how will he not also with him, listen to this, freely give us all things? Do you know how much God loves you? Do you know how much He cares about you? And people will give you everything that you need and you don't have to get all you have to do is just receive it? Do you know that we don't have to be sick? Amen. We don't have to be poor. And we don't have to go to hell. We can go to heaven and have money in our pocket going there. And we can be healthy the whole time we're going there. On our way there, we can do that. Because that's what that's what he he said he delivered us from the curse of the law, sickness, poverty, and spiritual death. Mm -hmm. If you don't have any, all those three, you're missing out on part of your salvation. Yep. There's there's a word uh, in he in Romans chapter uh, ten. That talks about that word salvation. Now we've talked about that before, we're not going to get into it again today, but anyway, salvation, he covers every area of your life in the word salvation. So, anyway, and that's where we are. In 32, I read that, so that's all I need to, to say. If God for you, then he's in the next If God for you, who in the world do you think ought to be against you? If God for you, let the little dog bark. What do you care what people think about you God gone for you? Mm -hmm. Alright. Now, in uh, Romans 3.23 We're still in back, are we? Romans 3.23 We're back and get Romans. Romans 3.23 says this For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And verse 24 says, being justified as a gift by His grace, gift. That's the thing we're looking for. Being justified as a gift. You can't earn justification. Nobody can live a good enough life to be justified. Amen. He justifies you not because of what you've done, but because of what Jesus Christ did at His yes. death, burial, and resurrection. Yes. That was part of it. He justifies you. And if you don't know what the word justified means, it means that He wipes your slate clean. There's nothing He charges you with. Amen. Just as if I had never sinned is what the word justified means. You have, that's, that slate is totally clean. And there's never, ever going to be a mark on it again. He will not mark it against you ever again. Because His Son's blood at Calvary, the precious blood of Jesus, was shed the most, the biggest price that God could ever pay. He paid the price by His own Son's blood. And God had to look away from Him 
when Jesus was on the cross, the Father had to look away from him because it, it pained him so bad because his son was dying. Father, into my hands, he said, I commit my spirit. And Jesus gave up the ghost. And he died. And three days later, God raised him from the dead. And all of it now belongs to us. Praise God. He, he broke the law off of us. We no longer have to keep the Ten Commandments and, and be legalistic about anything. Amen. The principles of the Ten Commandments are still good. And they're wrapped up in all the New Testament. They're all wrapped up in there. Paul called them the rotting and stone. He said we were delivered from the rotting and stone. And that's when the Ten Commandments were written in stone. He said you don't have to keep them. You get to keep them. You get to keep them because you honor God. You love God. And that's the thing that I want us to see. God wants us to be prosperous and happy and successful. He wants everybody in here to be successful at what you want to be successful at. Right. And God has put in us giftings and calling to everyone, every person in here. You have a gifting that if you're part of this place, that, you, that gifting, if you don't know what it is, we're missing out because you have a gift to offer us and we don't know what it is. So you need to find some time, some me time, carpet time, find some time to find out what God wants you to do. If you don't know, come tell me and I'll find out for you. <laughs> oh, you're supposed to go with me and, and, and do a lot of witnessing. How about that? Oh, no, that's not what I'm trying to do. It is for you to find out. My God. Thank you. Uh, Romans 11, 29. He said, I'll just quote this one. He said, the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. So if God knows everything and He gives somebody a gift of prophecy or a gift of giving and the total gifts of the nine rules of the Holy Spirit in uh, 1 Corinthians 12 uh, or the 6 or 8 in Romans chapter uh, 12 there's all kinds of gifts and, and uh, also in Ephesians chapter 4 all those gifts, they're a gift from God to us. And sometimes my calling in, in Ephesians chapter 4 is God's gift to the church. Right. I'm a pastor to start with mm -hmm. and other things too. I do apostolic work. That's what he called me to do. And I've had people with all these recent days about all that stuff. So, <clears throat> well, pray for you and Chris going to have to get busy doing what you do. <laughs> in, in my absence. <laughs> so, don't go to hold it, Lord. Don't blame somebody else for it. I'm going to get on and say it. Watch out there. But the gifts and callings of God, He knew you before you were born. He knew when you were going to fall off the wagon. He knew when you weren't going to do right. But He still called you anyway. How about that? Amen. You know why? Because you're worth something to the Father. Amen. You're worth Him saving, Him putting His Spirit in, and make, giving you a special call in your life because He knows that that's what He put on the inside of you for you to be able to accomplish. You know, some, some people just can't do what other people can do. That's true. I know people can't do what I do. I know they can't. Chuck Clayton told me, he said, I wish I could do what you do. He said, but I can't. I can't do that. I couldn't do what he did. Chuck spent all day long. We'd go somewhere, six, eight hours. We'd go we went to Birmingham, Alabama. That's, that's a long drive. He'd be on the phone the whole time. Guess who got to drive? I'd drive, and he'd be on the phone. Here, talk to this guy. Who is it? <laughs> oh, it's, it's uh, the heel guy. The name. Uh, Steve Hill. Huh? Steve Hill. Yeah, Steve Hill. Right? Steve Hill. He was in Hawaii. I'm driving. I don't hear the freezing here. Talk to Steve. I said, "Where's he? He's always in Hawaii." I said, "You call Hawaii?" He said, "Yes." Yeah. I'm calling him. All the time I talked to somebody. For eight hours he was on the phone. I said, I'm 
Somebody in your house on the ear. That's what I thought my only phone people on the inside of her. Now, I don't mind saying talking to my two hours, but man, on the phone, that's just not mine. Anyway. All right. Uh, Act 238. He said, now this one here is a little bit. I want to tell you this. 238 says this. <clears throat> well, he said, that all the house of Israel know for certain that God had made him both Lord and Christ is Jesus whom he crucified. Now when they heard this, they were pierced to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the disciples, what shall we do? And then verse 38, Peter said to them, repent, and each one of you baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. How many of you know that the gift of the Holy Spirit, it's a gift? Yeah. How many of you know you cannot earn that? That's right. Yeah. There's not anything you can do. You can't get good enough for God to give you the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. You can't do that. But what you can do is let the Lord use you and, and expose you to that and not find Him in it and you can get whatever you need. The Holy Spirit. He wants you to have it. God wants you to have His fullness in your life all the time. Not just sometimes. I hear people say, I, oh, brother, he said, the, they said, the anointing came upon me. I felt that anointing pulled together. I just want to laugh. I can do that without all the people and stuff. You know why? Because the anointing abides in us all the time. The anointing of God, the Holy Ghost, never <coughs> leaves us because the Holy Ghost carries the anointing all the time. Amen. Yes. He's never without an anointing. Yes. And he promised never to leave me nor forsake. So guess where the anointing is? It's on the inside of Tom all the time. And every believer all the time. Yes. Is somebody listening? Yes, good. You don't have to listen. You don't have to be without an anointing. I used to leave you had to fast three days, pray for somebody. Cast demons out of somebody. Why well, you better fast three days? Did you see Jesus fasting three days before he cast the demon out of somebody? Oh, wait, I can't pray for his neck, but I can pray. I haven't fasted for three days, so I'm going to go back. Uh, catch me in the next town, and I'll, I'll, I'll cast that thing out of it, because I'll try to fast for him down here, so I can get that thing out of it. It's crazy thing I've heard. All right. Uh, and also, John 1 17 says that. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ all that. I, I want you to understand. I'm James 1, 17, here is all one. Way here we go. James 1. <coughs> 17 says, every good gift, every good thing given, and every perfect gift is from above. And it comes down from the Father of God, the Father of life, with whom there is no variation. Or shift and shadow. God will change his mind every time the wind changes the direction. Amen. People think that God's wishy washy. He's so easily manipulated or maneuvered into something or not moved into something. Because they're thinking like, and then the book of Psalms says, He said, I'm not like you. Amen. God said, I'm not like you. But you need to be like me. Amen. That's what he's saying to us. <clears throat> so on Psalm 127, uh, where did Chastity go? This was for her, by the way. Children are gifts from the Lord. Children are a gift from the Lord. You have to learn how to and call your gift to do what you want it to do. Yes, this gift has to be a gift. So, that's about children. I learned well how to do that. My children never, ever manipulated me. 